Coming up this week, we've got a special episode all about the Winter Wonderland story giveaway. Welcome to episode 280 of the Big Gay Fiction Podcast, the show for avid readers and passionate fans of gay romance fiction. I'm Jeff Adams, and with me, as always, is my co-host and husband, Will Knaus. Hello, Rainbow Romance readers. We're so glad that you could join us for another episode of the show, the very first of a brand new year. Jeff and I wish you health and happiness in 2021. Here's to hoping that we can take what we've learned in the past 12 months and move forward making this year the best ever. And since this is the first episode of a brand new year, that means it's of course a brand new month, the month of January, which means I have the distinct pleasure of announcing the book club pick for this month. It's going to be K.J. Charles's An Unseen Attraction. Now this book is the first in her Sins of the Cities series. I think everybody should take note that we're actually doing book one in a series. Since we so often plunge into the middle somewhere, we are starting at the beginning. So I hope you'll join us for our deep dive discussion of this terrific historical. Members of our Patreon community will get a sneak preview starting this week. And the Unseen Attraction Book Club episode will become available to everyone and drop into your main podcast feeds on Thursday, January 28th. Something else we have coming up for you this month. We have a new edition of Big Gay Fiction Live. Coming up on January 14th, we will be talking about the brand new shared universe series, The Magic Emporium, with some of its authors. I'm going to be joined by Kim Fielding, Elliot Grayson, Jackie James, Reese Lawless, and Megan Maslow. We will be on Facebook Live on Thursday, January 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, and 12 a.m. for everybody who's in the UK. And I point this out because Reese is going to be awake in the middle of the night to be talking to us about this series. So I'm sure he would love some of his fellow UK folks to join him in the middle of the night as we do this live program. There'll be a link in the show notes to the Facebook event so that you can follow along and think about some questions you want to ask these wonderful authors as we talk about this new series. And 2021 kicked off in a major way for fans of gay romance fiction as the Winter Wonderland story giveaway began on the 1st. As we're recording this episode, we're about 36 hours into the new year. And in this giveaway, about 200,000 books have been claimed so far. To me, that's just remarkable. The number of stories that people have downloaded in just a very short span of time. We talked to Lucy Lennox about this promo as she was the mastermind of it. We're going to find out, for those of you who have not been to the promo yet, what you can expect when you get there. And she's also going to tell us a little bit about the two stories that she has available. Lucy, welcome back to the show. It's so wonderful to have you here as we start off 2021. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me back. We have something so exciting to talk about because the Winter Wonderland giveaway is underway. It started back on the 1st. For folks who may not know what this is, tell everybody about this terrific opportunity they've got. We are a group of authors in the gay romance space who have gotten together to bring the readers free, brand new, never seen before short stories. And some are even full length novels. They they're at least 3,000 words, but some of them go up to 60,000 word novels. And so it's an incredible, incredible opportunity to find new authors, new to you authors. There are a few debut authors in this promo who have their debut books coming out after this. It's just, it's like candy land for us, especially during a month right now where budgets are tight after the holidays and it's hard to justify splurging on ourselves with lots of books. This is going to fill your Kindle and your e-readers up for a while. And I'm so excited to have this group of authors because it is an amazing group. How did you decide to put this together? I mean, this is a huge undertaking wrangling a couple hundred authors. It is a huge undertaking. A couple of years ago, I did a similar giveaway. It was a back to school giveaway with sort of autumnal themed stories. And it was the first big group giveaway that I was organizing. So I was a little nervous about biting off more than I could chew. So I limited it, I think, to 35 authors. And at the time, there were a lot of author friends who were like, hey, why didn't I get a spot in this? Or I really wanted a spot in this. Or, oh, this sounds so fun. I would love to join if you do it again. And it, it got to the point where I I thought, you know, what, what if we tried this with just whoever wants to join can join as long as they meet the criteria for what what we want to do for the theme and the stories and whatnot. And like, 
what would that be like? You know, what would, what would that be like for the readers? What would that be like for the authors? And, and, you know, prolific works, which is where this giveaway is hosted has done large giveaways like this before, but I was still nervous about their capacity to handle this kind of traffic. So I reached out to them and said, I, I don't know how many people are going to sign up to participate in this, but can you handle it? And they said, yes, just, you know, let us know closer to the time. It's been just like, really exciting. It's a little bit intimidating <laughs> wrangling that many cats, but luckily my assistant, Leslie Copeland, who owns Gay Romance Reviews, has been helping and I could, couldn't do this without her. She and I are a good team for that. But basically what we did is we formed a Facebook group for all of the participating authors, which has been an unexpected side effect of this that I've really enjoyed because all of the authors have been like for the last couple of months, you guys are seeing these stories now and you're able to get these stories now, but you haven't been able to see them before now. They're all brand new, all exclusive to this giveaway. Nobody has seen them before, but us, the participating authors, we got to see authors excited cover reveals before mm -hmm. we were allowed to reveal it to you guys. We were revealing it to each other. We were asking for help with ideas and length and characters and what do you think about this? We were asking each other for help writing blurbs and how to make this fun for readers. And that part of it, that sort of like unexpected bonding and camaraderie between the authors has been just a, an amazing experience, I think. I mean, yeah, it's, it's been, unexpected. It's always good to see the community of authors come together. And they really did here. There's been a, a palpable excitement, which... Yeah. Rolling through the end of 2020 has been great to see, given how 2020 was not the best year in the world for anybody. Uh, yeah. And, you know, we, we've had several authors, too, who said, you know, this got me going again. You know, I've been having trouble getting my writing mojo going and knowing that I just needed to do something fun and different and short. It wasn't as big. And, you know, it's a free story. So it wasn't something they had to stress quite as much about or fit into their, you know, marketing plan or, you know, that business side of, of our job. And so they just got to have fun with it. And there have been a lot of people who've said it, it helped them get their writing mojo back. Yeah, I was certainly one of those. It helped a lot. And now it's time for it to be super fun for the readers. Yep. Uh, we've got the link to the Prolific Works page in our show notes. Mm -hmm. What can readers expect once they get there? Okay, so I will warn you that it is very overwhelming because there are so many stories there. But it's a great thing. And let me tell you how to make the most of it, and how to make it not quite so overwhelming. We have put together a checklist for readers that has all of the stories listed on it, both by author name and by subgenre. So if you just want to go in and make sure you get all of them, that you claim all of them, there's a little tick box where you can check, okay, I've downloaded that one to my Prolific Works account. I've downloaded that one. I've downloaded that one so that you'll know, because one of the things that happens is every time you visit the link, it changes the order that the books are displayed in. So it's, it's a little difficult to keep track of what you've claimed already, but you'll have this checklist. What that's also going to allow you to do is pay special attention to those subgenres that you really love. So if you are you know, a gay romance fantasy reader, and there's a gay romance fantasy subgenre list, you'll be able to see what stories the authors have put in, in that subgenre. If you like to read MPREG, if you like to read, you know, like whatever your subgenre is that's listed there in that checklist, it'll help sort of make this a little bit easier to manage. You can look out for just those titles to start with, and hopefully that will make it, you know, a little bit easier to navigate with the checklist. And Hopefully the, the checklist is there as one of the books to download um, as a PDF file, but we will also have it available through, in fact, maybe we can put that in the show notes as well. Absolutely. The link to the, to the checklist. So you can just get it there, but that's what we're doing to try and make it more manageable. The great thing about prolific works is if you download the app onto your phone, you can claim all of these stories and you don't have to, that doesn't mean you have to read them anytime soon. You don't have to feel like you have to read 200 stories this month. So claim them all. And then for the rest of ever, when you're standing in line at the grocery store or waiting in the carpool line for a kid or anywhere, you're at a doctor's office in the waiting room, you can just pull up the app on your phone and you have a short story to read. That's what I love about the Prolific Works app is that, 
there's always a new story to read. And so, you know, you can imagine like an entire year's worth of new authors and new stories to get to as you start chipping away at some of these great stories. It's really awesome that there are so many authors, so many genres, new authors. Mm -hmm. It's such a tremendous opportunity for people to be able to sample either new authors or even sample other genres they've never quite been sure about to maybe find something new to go off and explore a backlist or, you know, adds things to their TBR that they would, you know, pick up afterwards. Definitely. It's kind of like going to Costco and getting little samples from all the little departments, you know, you can just, it's like a taste test, especially because some of them are, are short and quick and fun. And, you know, you know, if you finish reading a long, heavy book and it's been super angsty and it leaves you with sort of like heartbroken and you just want a, a short break, like, you know, like a little sorbet before you tackle your next full length novel. So it's, that's another great opportunity. Or like for me, if I'm reading at night before bed and I finish my book at 10 and I know I can stay up till midnight, but if I start another full length novel, mm. I'm probably going to stay up till two. So there again, a short story is perfect for that. So many great opportunities uh, with the giveaway. And we would be remiss to not have you tell everybody what your entry into this giveaway is to, to tell them what they can grab from Lucy Lennox. Okay. I am very excited about my story. It's called Winter Waits. And that's actually the name of one of the main characters, Winter Waits. And one of the reasons I'm so excited about this is it is a prequel short for a brand new series that I have coming out. Uh, the first full length novel comes out February 2nd. So this is my introduction. The series takes place in a little ski town in Colorado. And this story, because our, I didn't mention before, but this giveaway is, is called Winter Wonderland, this prolific works giveaway. And so all of the stories are winter themed. Whatever that means to, to every author is different. And it could be, you know, sunny, you know, warm winter in a tropical location. It doesn't necessarily have to be cold and freezing, but for me, it is a snowy cabin type story. It's a rock star who's hurt his hand and he has an occupational therapist to come give him therapy. So Winter Waits is the therapist and it's, so it has a snowy cabin feel, but his name is also Winter. So I kind of thought that was fun. Well, they both reappear in the first full novel in my new series. So I'm really excited. Oh, that's terrific. Being able to get a little sneak peek into your new series uh, yeah. right as the year starts and a month or so before the, the new book comes out. Yep. And it'll have a pre-order link in the back. So you can go ahead and pre-order. And also I, I have a second entry in the, the giveaway as well. <laughs> I have another prequel, but it's for a series that's already out. May Archer and I write the Licking Thicket series, which is just a crazy fun romp. It's set in a small fictional town in Tennessee called Licking Thicket. And we have written two full length novels in that series already that have been released, Fakers and Liars. And we have a third full-length novel called Fools coming out February 28th. But we wanted to write a short story in this world because we love it so much. We love the characters in the town. So we went back and wrote a prequel short. And you can totally read both of these stories I'm talking about. You can read as total standalones. You don't have to have read anything else. But this story is called Flakes. And it's just, it's, it's a sort of opposites attract. And it, again, it's sort of stuck in a snowy cabin. I think that's going to be a very popular theme. Well, You'll horse see proximity you is so perfect. Yeah, he is lovely, <laughs> lovely. Yeah, I could read 200 of those stories. So, so yeah, it's check, check that one out as well. Fantastic. Well, great things for people to look forward to there. And on behalf of all the readers, I'll just speak for everybody. Thank you for organizing this to You're give welcome. everybody so many wonderful things to kick off the year with. It has been a labor of love, but it's, it's you know, seeing it come to fruition is, is really exciting. It's worth it. Yeah, absolutely. And as we said, we'll have the link to the giveaway and the checklist in the show notes. So everybody go pick it up. They have until January 10th to yep. grab these books and then they're they're gone. They're gone from the group giveaway and then what happens to them after that is up to each individual author. So the only guarantee to get these stories right now is in this giveaway that's like he said it's only available until January 10th. And then some of them are going to be for sale later maybe so if you want to get it free grab it now also. 
And thanks to Lucy for giving us all the details about the giveaway. The easy link for you to get there is biggayfictionpodcast.com slash winter. That's W-I-N-T-E-R. We'll take you right to the page with all of the stories available. The link to the PDF that she mentioned, that is the story checklist, is also available in our show notes. So you can just pick it up right there rather than having to download it and claim it in the giveaway itself. So you'll find that link in the show notes. Now, I also think it bears mentioning that not only are we enthusiastic supporters of the Winter Wonderland giveaway, but Jeff also happens to be one of the authors. I am. As you heard in the interview, writing the story for the Winter Wonderland giveaway kind of got me out of my writing funk that I had gotten myself into during 2020. I did kind of a pseudo sequel to the story that Will and I wrote together called The Hockey Player's Heart and created The Hockey Player's Snow Day. And in this story, we have pro hockey player Nick, who is on his way to spend a ski weekend with Caleb and Aaron, who are from The Hockey Player's Heart. He doesn't heed proper winter weather warnings, and he ends up stranded and finds his way to a cabin owned by a guy who lives out in the middle of nowhere because it's good for him as a writer. He is, in fact, a writer of romance novels and, in fact, a writer of hockey romance novels, among other things. Sean is quite stunned when his favorite hockey player shows up bedraggled on his doorstep. And because Sean uses a pen name, Nick has no idea that he's actually stumbled into the house of his favorite romance writer because, yes, Nick does read romance novels. These two end up spending a snow day together. And as you might imagine, there's a big old HEA involved for them by the end of the story as well. This is a 23,000 word novella that is available in the Winter Wonderland giveaway, which, as you know, runs through the 10th. After that, it'll be available to my newsletter subscribers as a freebie to pick up any time. So I hope you will check out The Hockey Player Snow Day because I had a blast writing it. Now, as Will mentioned, we are very enthusiastic about this giveaway. So we asked a few of the authors to tell us about the stories that they have in the giveaway and where you'll be able to find them even after the giveaway. So let's hear from those authors now. Hello, everyone. I'm Colby Dunbar. I write M.M. Empreg romance, and in the past, I've written historical books. I've written about vampires. I've taken part in the Vale Valley series with multiple Empreg authors, as well as season two of Bake Sale Bachelors. I've written one book set in a real-world location, which was Hong Kong. And the reason I did that was it's a place I know well. Approximately two years ago, I started co-writing with other Impreg authors. And those include the fabulous Lorelei M. Hart, Harper B. Cole, Tricia Lind, and from the new year, the also fabulous Layla Hunt. We've written both shifter and non-shifter Impreg books. And beginning at the end of January, Lorelei M. Hart, Trisha Lind and myself have a new dragon shifter series beginning. Not only are they dragons, but they're princes. My story for the Winter Wonderland giveaway is titled The Omega Prince's Awakening. And it is loosely based on Sleeping Beauty. It starts out with one of the main characters, Mason, arriving at a castle which has been refurbished as a luxurious hotel. He's there for a post-Christmas break and his friends will be joining him in a day or so. On the first night, he has dinner in what used to be the Great Hall and afterwards he sits at the bar and is chatting to the barman. And that guy tells Mason that the original owners of the castle disappeared under mysterious circumstances. Mason is both intrigued and a little bit freaked out. But anyway, he goes back to his room and being a sort of architecture buff, he admires the wooden panelling on the wall. He gets up and he runs his hands over it and lo and behold, it clicks and opens, and there's a passageway. Now, what do you think he does? Does he A, close it up, jump into bed, 
pull the bed covers over his head and go, oh no, that's not for me. Or B, does he traipse down that tunnel and find something at the other end? If you said B, you were right. Ding, ding, ding. What he doesn't realise at the time is that he's leaving the present, where his room is, and venturing into the past. At the end of the tunnel, he finds a room, and inside is a huge bed. And fast asleep in the bed is a prince. If you want to find out what happens, you'll have to read the book. Now, this story is what you would call a companion book. Trisha Lind and I have a series out called Once Upon an MM Romance, and these are modern MPreg. My story in the Winter Wonderland giveaway is a companion story to that series. The books that Trisha and I have out are Bad Apple, which is adapted from Snow White, and we're writing a second one called Sweet and Sour, which is loosely based on Beauty and the Beast. And I should point out that Trisha also has a story in the Winter Wonderland giveaway, which is called Chasing Ever After. So please check that out too. Once the giveaway is finished, I plan on extending my story. At present, it's about 14,000 words, and I hope to get it up to about 25,000. I don't have a timeline for when that's going to happen. All I can say is sooner rather than later. Once it's done, I'll put it into Kindle Unlimited and it'll be at Amazon. I started writing romance because whether it's set in the past, the present, on an alien planet or a world where shifters exist, love is universal. Romance is an escape both for an author and the reader. I fall in love with the characters as I write them and I really hope my readers can do the same and why do I write Embreg romance in particular? The idea of fated mates draw me to it initially but ultimately it's about love for one another, for the ability to create a family and as we know, there are many ways to make a family. They come in all different shapes and sizes. And hey, what's not to love about that? Now, when I write individually, as opposed to with other authors, I rarely, if ever, have an outline. Usually, I have the first sentence of the book in my head. That's it. Sometimes I'll have that sentence in my head for a month or so. I'll often get halfway through the book and think, oh, this would have been so much easier with an outline. I must write an outline next time. But when I start a new book, I do the same thing. One sentence and go from there. For example, in the book I had out in December, Berry Merry Christmas, I knew the first line would be the detective jumping out behind the bushes with his assistant yelling, who goes there? That's all I knew before the story began. Of course, when I write with other authors, we have to have an outline. I like, if possible, to inject humour into my stories, but it has to come naturally. I can't say to myself, oh, in this paragraph, I must have something funny. No, nah, I can't do it. It has to happen as I'm writing. And one of the easiest ways for me to add that humour is to use pets. And three of the most memorable pets that I've included in my books have been uh, Trixie, the naughty pink piglet, Nanny, the goat that liked to eat anything and everything, and Floyd, the talking parrot, who loved soap operas and managed to get himself on one in the book not in real life. As far as getting in touch with me, I'm on social media as Colby Dunbar. I have a website, colbydunbar.com. Some of you may have visited that during December from the 1st to the 24th when I had an MPreg advent calendar. I'm at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and even Pinterest. My Facebook group is The Woods Are Never Solitary. 
that might sound like a weird name for a Facebook group, but it comes from a quote by Ellen Montgomery, who wrote Anne of Green Gables, and that book is very close to my heart. I hope that you will not only enjoy The Omega Prince's Awakening, but you'll take advantage of all the amazing stories from the wonderful writers in the giveaway. And I hope to hear from some of you in the new year. Hi, I'm Shannon West, and I write MM Romance, mostly paranormal or sci-fi with a little fantasy thrown in. I have been known to dabble a little in BDSM, too. I love reading all of it, though, and I love trying to write new genres. I have a friend who once said that with her books, every time she writes one, the characters seem to grow a tail. I seem to have the same problem. My latest series includes one about witches and demons called Raising Hell, another series about vampires and witches and all manner of paranormal creatures in New Orleans called Witches the Big Easy. Currently, my best-selling series is Mate of the Tiger Prince, which is sci-fi. There are already nine books in that one, and I'm working on the tenth now. It's called Half Blood. Now, of course, my sci-fi is not what anyone would call serious science fiction. It's more along the lines of Guardians of the Galaxy's kind of science fiction or written just for fun. But I do love to write it because it lends itself to so many plot lines and it's just a blast to write. For Winter Wonderland, I wrote a BDSM story. But it's Christmas, so it was very light on the S&M. It's called A Dom for Christmas. In my story, Jordy has been having a really bad year. He was laid off from his teaching job and then injured in a car accident. To add insult to injury, literally, his insurance had just run out. He suffers a concussion that has kept him out of work or even trying to look for work for a long time. And he finally reaches the end of his rope when the power company turns off the lights and the heat on Christmas Eve in the middle of a winter storm. With no choice but to rely on the kindness of his friends, he goes to his best friend Tori's house to throw himself on her mercy and sleep on her couch. But he finds her all dressed up to go out in her best leather outfit. She's about to attend a big BDSM Christmas party, and she invites Jordy along. It's not much in, of a partying mood, but as luck would have it, he almost immediately runs into the last person in the world that he wants to see, his ex-boyfriend and his lover, Finn. Jordy had dabbled in BDSM a little when he was with Finn, who was also his dom, but they had a really bad breakup. And though Jordy still carries a torch for Finn, he hasn't seen him in almost two years. Jordy decides he just wants to go home. But then Tori talks him into watching a scene at the party, and the next thing he knows, he's volunteering to be flogged by not one, but two doms, and one of them is Finn. Jordy just wants to impress him, but he's caught up in the moment and forgets that he doesn't really like pain at all. He remembers that, though, right after he's been cuffed to the Aunt St. Andrew's cross. Here's the beginning paragraphs of that story. I knew my evening was going to be bad when my Netflix shut off in the middle of my movie and the lights flickered and winked out. Shit. Would the power company really have turned off my electricity the night before Christmas? And the answer apparently was yes, they most certainly would. And Merry fucking Christmas to me. I ferreted around for some candles, finally locating one stubby one and a pack of matches. But the candle gave off almost no light, so I used my phone to light my way to bed to get under the covers, pull the quilt up over my head, and contemplated how likely it was I could just stay there for a while, like the rest of my life, which promised to be short if I didn't get some heat on pretty soon. It had begun to spit snow and ice pellets earlier that afternoon, a rare occurrence for this part of the South, and one that turned the roads into demolition derbies. The weatherman said we'd have temperatures in the low teens by morning. It seemed to me I had two choices. Stay here, freeze to death in my own house, or brave the roads to go to my friend Tori's house and beg her to give me shelter till morning. I sighed and decided I had little choice but to throw myself in my friend's mercy. I hope you'll want to read more of A Dom for Christmas. It's a story about second chances with a very happy ending. It was a really fun story to write. I wrote one on a similar theme a few years ago called The Christmas Slave, which is still available on Amazon. That story was picked up by a Japanese Yaoi magazine and published a few years ago. And that was kind of exciting. So when I thought about doing this story, I wanted to do the same kind of theme, although, of course, a totally different story with all new characters. It's kind of a rag-to-riches theme, and I think it makes a great Christmas story with love, redemption, a little kink, and some Christmas morning surprises. I can't wait for everyone to read it and see what you think. 
And I can't wait for you to read all the other great stories on Winter Wonderland. And I hope everyone will check it out. After the giveaway, my story will be available for free to all my newsletter subscribers. And it will also be available on Amazon. If you're looking for me, I have a Facebook page called Wicked West. And I'd love to see you there. My website is shannonwestbooks.com. You can find a sign up for my newsletter there too. And my Twitter is at shannonwest8. So please find me and say hello. I hope you enjoy my short story, A Winter Wonderland. I'm Slade James, and I'm a new author in this genre. I write contemporary MM romance about sexy Southern men who work at a gay clothing optional campground in the mountains of North Georgia. I've been going to men's campgrounds for the past 25 years, but due to the pandemic, this was the first year I couldn't go. So in 2020, I decided to attend as a mental traveler and bring you all with me. My Winter Wonderland story is called The Uncut Wood. My partner Stevie actually came up with the title and challenged me to write a story to go along with it. The Uncut Wood is a 12,000 word short story featuring friends to lovers, a cabin in the snowy woods, and a kilt wearing lumberjack. If you're wondering what lumberjacks could possibly get into at a naked campground during the off season in winter, well, they play with wood. In January, the guys who do lumberjack duty at the campground hold an annual competition event called the Jack Olympics. Now, since they met, blonde, preppy, country boy Hank has been in love with his mohawked, guy-linered, kilt-wearing co-worker Gunner. Gunner's extremely hot and different. He's a tall, red-haired, Viking Highlander fantasy come to life with a bit of an eccentric fashion sense. Hank's been deep in the friend zone for two and a half years, but he's determined not to go another season without telling Gunner how he feels about him. So, Hank finally gets up the nerve to make a little private wager. If he wins the log splitting competition, Gunner has to go out on a date with him. And with snow coming down in the mountains and roads slick with black ice, there's nowhere to go to be alone other than a remote cabin in the woods. A very cozy little cabin. With one bed, of course. The Uncut Wood is a prequel to my new Bear Camp series. Book one is titled Grumpy Bear. It's a full-length, grumpy sunshine, boss employee novel that comes out later this month. So, this story is a little introductory taste to my gay campground full of bears. Not shifters, for the record. The other kind of bears. After the Winter Wonderland story giveaway, you can find the Uncut Wood on Amazon, or you can get a copy as a gift when you sign up for my mailing list. You can find the details at sladejames.com, and you can also friend me on Facebook. Thank you to Lucy Lennox and Leslie Copeland for organizing, and to all the fantastic authors who contributed to this massive giveaway. It's really cool to be part of it. Happy New Year. Happy reading. Hello, my name is Marina Vivancos. To talk a little bit about what I normally write, I love writing angsty stories that center around the main characters instead of outside plot and really delve into kind of the personal issues that they have and how they work through it and how, you know, relationships and love and community can be part of the healing process. Everybody needs a support system around them. But it's not all of the uh, healing process. You know, the characters have to do the work themselves to go through their obstacles. As far as the Winter Wonderland story, mine is called A Wild Thing Grows. And it takes place in some vague old timey scene. And we follow Jarek, who is an outcast from his village, very lonely. And he's come to believe that he doesn't deserve any more than he has, which is not much in terms of, you know, affection or relationships. And of course, everything changes when this strange man called Aviv crashes into his life completely naked. And we come to know a little bit more about Aviv, who's a very, you know, strange man. He claims to have known Jarek his whole life, even though, according to Jarek, they've just met. But Aviv claims to know how Jarek treats the forest, 
how beautiful and kind he is, how he runs on a philosophy of if he takes something from nature, he gives something back. And I think that has allowed Jarek to, you know, encounter of sort of magic in his life. The story takes place that winter as Jarek and Aviv get to know each other and things heat up. And, you know, the mystery that I'll leave you with is the magic that has brought Aviv to Jarek dissipate when spring comes. Or will they find their happily ever after? I mean, who knows? Truly, truly a mystery. <laughs> the story will be available as part of the Winter Wonderland project. Unfortunately, once that is over, I will pull it from the web because I just want to revive it every winter or, you know, next winter at least. However, you can find me on Vivanco's For Yours. That's the Facebook group. Or and all my contact details are at the end of the book. And I have another freebie. So don't fear if you know you, you want a little bit more from me, you can, you know, have another free story or one of my other books. Thank you so much for letting me be part of this project. Hello everyone. My name is Spencer Spears and I write contemporary MM romance. My Winter Wonderland story is called A Very Naughty New Year, and it's about two college students who are dating in secret and who decide to use a certain vibrating toy at a family New Year's Eve party, and then one of them loses the remote. A Very Naughty New Year connects to my Christmas novel, XOXO Santa, and it picks up about two weeks after that book ends. It can be read on its own, but it's even more fun if you've read the other book too. In XOXO Santa, we have a friends to lovers, first time gay awakening storyline with some online dating, mistaken identity shenanigans thrown in as well. In XOXO Santa, Blake Salazar is looking to hook up with a guy for the first time. He is not out and he doesn't want to come out. He's trying to keep everything quiet until he knows for sure that he really does like guys. So he downloads an app, meets a guy who seems great. But before he can meet this guy who he's been talking to online, he has to get through a week's vacation with his family and some family friends who just happen to include Henry Waterstone, his childhood best friend who is gay and out and proud, and who also seems to be spending a lot of time on his phone talking to somebody on the internet. And if you've ever read a romance novel before, you can probably guess the direction the story goes in after that. Anyway, A Very Naughty New Year picks up a couple weeks after that story ends. And in A Very Naughty New Year, Blake and Henry have gotten together but they're still in that exciting, scary phase of a new relationship where you're hoping the other person likes you as much as you like them, and they haven't told their parents yet. So this story has some very well-meaning meddling parents and a ton of snark, a lot of steamy scenes, and some extremely awkward moments when that remote turns up again in the middle of the party. It also includes a cameo from a beloved side character from my Murphy Brothers series as well. After the giveaway, A Very Naughty New Year will be available via my newsletter, which you can sign up for by going to my website, spencerspears.com. You can also find me on Facebook at Spencer Spears Romance, or in my Facebook group, Spencer's Space, or on Instagram at Spencer Spears Writes. Thank you for listening. Happy reading. Hi, my name is Gia von Harris. I go by Gia. I started writing Impreg Romance about four years ago, and I really love it. I really enjoy what I do. Thank you to all the readers who supported me so far. My Winter Wonderland story is about Tristan, a single father. He decides to spend the holidays in Jamaica. It's his first vacation without his 18-year-old daughter. And while he's on vacation, he meets Ethan Blackwell, who is getting pressure from his father to find a mate or risk losing his position as CEO of 
the Blackwell conglomerate. I'm interested in, in Ethan Meats. It's sparks, you know, they start flirting with each other, sparks fly, and one thing leads to another, and they are like inseparable since then. My short story is not a part of a series. I would like to turn it into a series if I have the opportunity next year. My schedule is already packed with a lot of things that I need to accomplish and complete. And I like to add this one to the list. But as of now, it's a standalone and it can be read as is. I will be keeping it up after the Winter Wonderland giveaway is over. I'll be keeping it up on Prolific Works for a little bit longer, maybe till the end of the month, give everyone time enough to download it and read it and so forth like that. If you want to get to know me or get to know what I write or what I have coming up next, I'm on every social media, even TikTok, but I haven't posted anything like forever. I'm mostly on Facebook. Um, you can find me in my readers group. It's Giovanna's Secret One Nighters. And that's where you can find most of what I am working on. And that's about it. Before I go, I would like to say thank you to Lucy Lennox and Leslie Copeland for putting this giveaway together. It really was a pleasure to write this story and share it with everyone. I want to thank all the readers who've heard of me and have supported me since my first book. I hope that my writing give you joy and help you through a tough day. Thank you very much for everything. Hi, my name is Neil Plaxy and I write in a variety of different genres. I write the Mahu Investigation series about an openly gay Honolulu homicide detective the Have Body Will Guard series of adventure romances about a pair of bodyguards who travel the world and save LGBT people from trouble. I also write about a young gay FBI agent in Miami and a series of romances about young gay men on South Beach looking for love and career success. My story for Winter Wonderland is called Winter Term. And it's a contemporary, small town, second chance at romance story. It's set in Middlebury, Vermont, which is a college town that I particularly love. My protagonist, Will, is a professor there of Victorian literature. During the J term, or winter intercession term in January, he's teaching a course on contemporary romance. And he falls in love with a ski instructor named Jeremy, who is a Scotsman, who's fleeing from the end of a romance. So both of them have their baggage. The story is a fun one with occasional references to Jane Austen and a dollop of the great British Bake Off. It will be available through Amazon after the promo is finished. You can find me on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Pinterest, all under my name, Neil Plaxy. It rhymes with taxi. And you can also find me at my website, www.mahubooks.com. Thanks for the opportunity to introduce myself to you. And I'm looking forward to reading a lot of great stories in this promo. Hi, my name is Kai Butler. I write urban fantasy with LGBTQ characters and gay Regency romance novels set in space. For Winter Wonderland, I wrote a short urban fantasy story called A Haunting at Midwinter. It's about a private investigator named Parker Farrow who works on paranormal cases. He took on a haunted house and is all set to exercise a ghost with his powers when a police officer named Nicholas King comes knocking at the door, looking for a prowler. The cop gets stuck in the haunted house with Parker, which wouldn't be a big issue, except that King doesn't believe in ghosts, so Parker ends up having to protect King and get rid of a nasty poltergeist. As we get further into the story, we also learn that King has magic of his own that he can use to help Parker, so they need to team up to defeat their common enemy.
Haunting at Midwinter is actually a lead-in to a new series that I have coming out in January called Santa Maro Investigations. It's an urban fantasy series about Parker Farrow and the cases he takes on. And yes, his hot cop returns in the series as his love interest. I'll be keeping Haunting at Midwinter as a newsletter-only download after Winter Wonderland, so it'll always be available with my other newsletter shorts. If you're interested in finding out more about Parker's Santa Maro Investigations or my Regency in Space series, you can find me at my website, Kai Butler, K-A-I-B-U-T-L-E-R dot com, and on Facebook at my reader group, the Kai Butler Group Brigade. I'm sure you'll have lots of new authors to try in Winter Wonderland, and I hope you decide to give A Haunting at Midwinter a chance. Happy reading! This episode's transcript has been brought to you by our community on Patreon. If you'd like to read what the authors had to say about their books for yourself, simply head on over to the show notes page for this episode at BigGayFictionPodcast.com. Don't forget, the show notes page also has links to everything that we've talked about in this episode. And thanks so much to Colby, Shannon Slade, Marina Spencer, Giovanna, Neil, and Kai for giving us the scoop on their stories. Now, I want to talk about a couple of stories that I have had the pleasure to read so far from the Winter Wonderland giveaway. Debut author Stella Shaw has Dante in the giveaway, and I fell so hard for Dante and the residents of Haven. Dante is actually helping out a little bit to renovate the Haven with the new owner, Rick. Dante meets Rick's friend, Blake. Now, talk about sparks flying. Oh, my God. This meet cute that Stella wrote is pretty amazing. It blazed right off the page. Now, Dante's afraid that his past is going to turn Blake off, but this is really an attraction that neither of them can let go. There's a wonderful age gap story here, and how Blake and Dante actually play with the power dynamics between them is really something I loved very much in this story. Most of all, I really adored how Stella brings these two together and how the entire story is just infused with good humor and warmth all the way through it. This is the first book in Stella's Haven series, and I am looking so forward to reading more about this fantastic series based on this debut. Once Winter Wonderland is over, this book's going to be available on Amazon. It's actually up for pre-order right now to come out on the 11th. And the second book is due in February, and that book's going to focus on Rick, the Haven's owner. So I am definitely have my pre-order button already pushed for that one. The other one I quickly want to mention is Fake Date Flip Flop by Hank Edwards. This is part of his Williamsville Inn series. So we have a snowy weekend at the inn here, and it happens to be a weekend full of obligations for Nash and Tobias. These two meet up at the front desk of the hotel. And after a little spark of attraction, they decide to spend their first evening at the hotel having dinner together. And it's here that we find out that Nash has a wedding to go to, and Tobias is here for a high school reunion. And they're both there solo, so they decide to, you know, why not be fake dates for each other so that neither has to go to the events solo. This is a book that's right up Will's alley. <laughs> Hopefully he's going to read as well, because, you know, he is a huge fan of the fake date trope. Now, these two guys bond over dinner, of course, and it's going to be super easy for them to do these things over the weekend because they're already wanting to be around each other anyway. I loved these guys. First of all, it was great to see a couple in their 40s at the focus of a novel. So often we're reading stories about you know guys in their 20s and their early 30s, which is perfectly all well and good, but it was really cool to see two older guys. And the guy on the cover of this book, too, Talk about a silver fox. Oh my God, he's so hot. Now, I loved the scenarios that Hank put these two through from meeting the family at the wedding and navigating the, the high school crowd. It was a whole bunch of fun. The chemistry between Nash and Tobias is just palpable from the beginning and kept me turning the pages to see how these guys were going to figure out how to stay together when they had to go back to their respective hometowns. Now, after the giveaway, this title is going to be up on Amazon. I believe it also has a January 11th release date. And, of course, it's going to fit right into Hank's Williamsville Inn series. So there's a couple for you to grab while they're free before they become available for sale a little later in the month. And the link, again, for the giveaway is biggayfictionpodcast.com slash winter. If the past year has taught us anything, it's that a little bit of self-care goes a long way. So I hope all of you will take a moment to download some amazing stories 
and take some time for yourself and read a couple of happily ever afters to get your new year started off right. All right, I think that'll do it for now. Coming up next in episode 281, Serena Bowen joins us to talk about her brand new book, Roommate. I love this book so, so much. I got to read it at the very end of 2020. It made December amazing for me. I can't wait to tell you guys so much more about this book as we get to talk to Serena next week. It's just everything, and you should go pre-order it right now. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, please stay strong, be safe, and above all else, keep turning those pages and keep reading. Big A Fiction Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. If you'd like to find some shows that you can add to your 2021 playlist, you can check out frolic.media slash podcast. Our original theme music is composed by Daryl Banner. Thank you.